Hey everyone, it's the Fa. Um, so I went to Barnes and Noble and I picked up two of magazine in the book. This one was $14.99. It's worth it. So this is American Artist Drawing. Okay. So I wanted to show you. This is like that box method when it comes to drawing the figure, um, figuring out the perspective is going to help you. For example, I mean, this is just like back in school. You know? So if you can put, I like to imagine maybe like a tissue box. Get a tissue box. Your head should, f well, my face is short, but your head should fit in the tissue box. So this would be like the front of your face, sides of your face, your ears would be here, this would be the top of your head, and that would be underneath your chin. So if you imagine your body broken up into blocks like this, that's going to help you when you draw or sketch out your painting, whatever. <laughs> this is kind of interesting too. It's just the different axes of the head. There's also these little tips and tricks from artists. So this is from Daniel Graves. I'm not going to read them all, but just some that I found kind of interesting. Create shadows by leaving out detail. So don't fill in everything. So you don't see any detail around here. It's just all dropped down into a shadow. And you don't want to use flash either when you're, uh, like if you're taking a picture, you don't want to use flash because it's just going to, flatten out the images. And then I thought, I thought this was funny. So this is Suzanne Lyon. Use much and cheap razor blades to sharpen your pencil. I find that funny because I think it takes up too much time when you're sharpening pencils. I'm really ghetto. I just use a box cutter. It's faster and you don't have to be so I just saw a bunch of students around a trash can and they had their little pencils and their little razor blades and they're just, you know, cutting it like this so carefully, spending like 10 minutes by the trash can. I was like, dude, just box cutter. Ten, uh, five seconds, you're done. But anyways, uh, good note, shave the pencils at a really low angle so that you have a lot of the lead exposed, charcoal pencils or pastel and pencils, you probably want to do that the same way. The length of the tip, like this one is factory, so if I were to sharpen it, I would sharpen it at a steeper, you know, steeper angle, so I would, it wouldn't be like that, it would probably, I can't see it, it'd probably be more like that. Um, that way, the lead is longer and thinner, or not thinner, just longer, so that if I were to shade, I have more of that sticking out. Rob Liberace, blend with a brush when you're, um, when you're drawing, occasionally blend. And I never used to do that until I started working as a makeup artist. And it was interesting, because after, and I never used to use pastels to do like initial sketching, but anything chalky, like fine charcoal, pastels, I find that if I blend with a short, firm brush, it just comes more naturally because I guess makeup, drawing, painting, very similar. So kind of glad that I had that experience. So now I utilize the brush while I'm blending. Got some great images on, you know? Skull. And I think it's important if you are doing figure drawing, figure painting, you need to know the anatomy, like the bone structure. If you don't understand this, your figures will look funny. That's 
some great stuff here. Like check out all the different things of the feet. Playing with the weight of line, you don't have to do solid line. It can taper, it can get thick and thin, it can fade. So that's important too when you're Sherat. He looked out at nature as if he did not know what anything was, but could only perceive it as shape and tone. I think that's interesting because a lot of people think they can't draw or can't paint. I think it's an important note that you should make what you see, and that's another part of drawing and painting, learning how to see things. You should see things in shapes, lines, color, um, as opposed to the objects. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay. <laughs> Put stuff on paper or canvas. Put what you see. Don't think about what you're doing, just do it. This is the best $35 I've spent on a book, and it's relatively cheap. Yeah, it's pretty big. So this is Portrait Painting Atelier, uh, Ode Master Techniques, and Contemporary Applications. This is by Suzanne Roker. Okay, so I took down a lot of notes to tell you guys. You guys may or may not know this. This is if you are an advanced painter, then you probably wouldn't be watching this anyways. This is for people who have some experience with painting. Because I don't, I vaguely remember stuff. That's kind of why I bought a book to refresh myself. I do have all my um, textbooks and everything too, so I can go into that. Here's a step-by-step -step process on how to stretch your canvas. I was doing it the ghetto style without a... Um, what are they called? Canvas pliers? I was just pulling it by hand and getting raw knuckles and things weren't as taut. So I will be picking up a canvas plier soon. After you've primed your canvas and you're gonna, ch if you choose to do like a toned ground, different categories. So we have burnt sienna and burnt umber, raw umber, which is gonna give you that kind of warm cherry wood color and that's, you know, the classical toned ground. You've got grays, you can do cools or warm over cools. So if you have like the bluish kind of gray ground, you can go over it with Mars Brown or Burnt Sienna over that. Red green ground. So you're gonna do a balanced mixture of complements, but then you wanna check the ratio of like the red and green because depending on the type of red or green that you use, you wanna check the chroma because one might be really intense. Just whatever the nature of that pigment. You want to check that before you lay it down. Golden grounds, like a golden wheat color. That is great for emphasizing strong light. Then you also have green grounds for contrasting the pinks in skin tone. And you would probably want to use something like Terra Vert, which is really popular. Burnt Umber, which is popular for grisaille type so that's like black, white, and gray. The dark to light approach, so everything's dark, and then you slowly, you're slowly gonna work your way to the light colors. Think Caravaggio, Caravaggio? Yeah. Flesh tone looking swatches. This, this is pretty cool. Like if you start with Tarot Rose, this is what you get. We mix green ochre with it. And so he's got a lot of different colors going on. And this is also relates to makeup too. If this were makeup you and you're highlighting um, or bronzing, you want to use something orange or golden-y. It'll look prettier. I just saw that, so I thought of that. They also do the box. I call it box method or box theory. I don't know if that's what it's called, but adopting a technique used by old masters. The details on like the different shapes of the eyes when on different axes and different perspectives and looking at it. I saw this and I was kind of bothered by it because those are duck lips. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting stuff done if you want to get it done, but it just feels weird seeing a plastic surgery face in a fine arts book. But I don't know, maybe they're doing a piece on contemporary I don't know. I just, it just seems weird. You know, 
I don't know. That's just that's just me. Yeah. I like this approach when it comes to I kind of like preserving the background color and letting that show through. Like if you work, if you start off with a, if you're doing, let's say, a, um, a drawing or like a quick study on gray paper or like maybe orange paper or something, you know, like I like the fact that you start off with the gray paper and then you only add colors here and there, but you still see the gray, but it's not background it's the middle tone of figure that makes sense oh okay well for flesh tones um it's a nice note you use earth reds examples burnt umber burnt sienna venetian red flesh ochre terra rosa indian red english red mars brown if you're going to add warmth to the flesh add yellow ochre or if you're gonna um at a cool note, mix your tint with blue, like ultramarine or cobalt. Okay, so again, a tint is when you add white to your hue. A shade is, wait, there we go, tint, shade, and tone. Okay, so a tone is when you add gray to your hue and a, what, shade. <laughs> shade is when you add black to the hue, okay? Hue is just a color, like red, blue, so white and blue, that is a tint of the blue color. For the dull color in the lips, like if you're adding the dull color in the lips, like in here or here, um, you might want to use Mars Violet or the inner part of the eye, the inner corner of the eye, Mars Violet. And then the, cre okay, well I don't really have a crease, but for those who have like a deeper crease like that socket in the eye. You might want to use red browns like Mars Violet and Burnt Umber or an Earth Red and Black mixed together. And you don't want to mix your paints on the canvas unless you're doing like pointillist kind of approach where you're putting colors next to each other. You want to mix it on your palette first and then apply the paint. Oh, for tints, you don't want to use straight titanium white because it's very opaque and it might look really dull. So you, if you're going to use titanium white, you might want to mix it with a bit of zinc white or use flake white and then the hue. Fat over lean, probably know that. If you do like a really heavy, opaque, straight from the tube paint, like lots of layers of that, and then you go over with like a thinned out um, like a lot of it, like a lot of layers of thinned out paint with mineral spirits or terps or whatever's. And you go over that really oily fatty layer, it's gonna like kind of remove the bottom layers. Oh, if you're gonna do a person's face and you're painting the flesh, you wanna paint the flesh past the hairline. Okay, so well, my hair, okay, so if I took my hair down. And then, wait, my hair's kind of wet right now. And let's say I've got the part and everything, okay? If I were turned this way, and then I was going to get painted or whatever, you want to paint past this hairline, so a little bit in. And you also want to paint an area up here, too. Because you're going to paint the hair over flesh. So yeah, thirty-five dollars well spent, and I hope you like that quick little review on the magazine and the book. Go ahead and pick yours up if you want. Um, if not, you can just browse or whatever. But it's good to have reference material. Thanks for watching. I hope it was a little bit helpful, and I will see you guys again. Okay, bye.